All right, for the second part of segment one today, our only segment for today's show, we are going to dive into combat now. So the last video, we talked about how to roll the dice. We probably over-explained everything to a point that now you're totally confused. That's great. That's what we aim to do here. We aim to confuse you. Woo-hoo. Now we're, now we're going to confuse you about combat. So You can donate to us on PayPal. We actually have a few silent donators. We appreciate you guys. We don't shout you out because, you know, we picture that's a silent donation. Same with Kofi. Oh, you did Kofi? Oh, sorry. Uh, Kofi, another way to silent donate. And uh, this one, I'm not sure if it's working. Some people say it is. Some people say it isn't. But you can try it. And, of course, like, subscribe, share, and leave us a comment. That would be awesome. But let's get to our content. So let's uh, we put the book up on the screen. If I can find it, there it is. It's a book. It doesn't need audio, no. Oh, it looks horrible. There we go. And we'll F11 that bad boy. And there we go. There is our cover for Absolute Power. Yep. And 177, I think it was. Nope, it's one off. And we're going to start with the chart that we kind of were going to end up on last time. So here's how we do combat. And hopefully by the end of this, we understand it. Because I'll be honest right now, I'm looking at this going, uh-oh, what is all this about? So you start combat, you determine the initiative order, and the attacker acts on his initiative. Now, optional combat rules are in green, so apparently you can ready an action, so I'm guessing that's holding an action, where a character acts on a lower initiative in response to a specific condition. There you go, yeah, it's holding an action. But the general action, so over here, player describes the action to the game master. So hey, Ian Doug, I'm going to shoot sure. some foo. I'm shooting a foo. Awesome. There's tactical action, Character can either aim, wait for an opening, or take a total defense. And I guess we're going to find out what all that means in a moment. And it goes over here to the end of action. Nice little flow chart. But let's go back to this side. General. I want to I want to attack a mofo. Go for it. Follow that down to the next box. Attacker's total roll equals the sum of two dice, attack combat value, and attack attribute modifiers. There you go. 2d6 plus your attack combat value, which is already written on your character sheet. Yep. And any attack attribute modifiers, if you have them. If you have them, yeah. If if, if you have, you know, uh, attack mastery, then you'd add that to the result. You add that level to the result of your roll plus your plus your stat. Okay, cool. Uh, pl- plus your ACV. Fine. If the attack succeeds, base damage is afflicted equal to the weapon's attribute level multiplied by the damage multiplier. Remember, things come in fives in this game, so it's fairly easy. Yes. That's why when you look, like, I have 100 hit points. Yeah, you're dead. Um, because things are multiplied by five. So if your weapon is, uh, let's just say it does, uh, I don't know, does 15 damage. Oh, 15. And then you have a damage multiplier. I don't know. I don't know what normal damage is in the game. We'll find out soon. But uh, So weapon attribute level multiplied by the damage. So, okay, attribute level. So let's say the attribute level is three. And the damage multiplier is five. It does 15 damage. Plus the attack combat value, plus any appropriate size damage modifiers, which we talked about in the first episode. Or second. Either one. First stream. Critically, if the attacker if the attacker's total roll is significantly higher than the defender's total roll, damage inflicted may be doubled or tripled. See page 28. Okay, I hope that there's more of a definition on this than significantly higher. Yeah, significantly higher is is a little too vague for for die rolls. All right. They should be a little more specific. And the only reason I say that isn't because I want specificity. I actually prefer framework spe- to specificity. But in this one, players are going to be, dude, that's definitely significantly higher. But, you no, know, it's it's up to the game master, really. Yep. So the game master says what's significant. And why why do you have to keep track of what is significant and what isn't? I'd rather have a number to keep the consistency going. Right. Yeah. We'll find out. Maybe there is. Uh, check for shock. If damage, if damage inflicted equals or exceeds the defender's shock value, uh, roll an average, so target number 12, so an average soul stat roll. So you roll your soul, soul stat. I cannot talk. Your soul stat. So it'll be 2d6 plus your soul stat. Yeah, but remember, everything in green is optional. Uh, optional. Everything com- okay. in green is optional. Critical hits are optional. Shock is optional. All this stuff is optional. The only thing that's not is blue and red. Blue, uh, but blue are all the intermediate actions. Red is the beginning of the action, and red is the end of the action. That is it. Once all that's decided, action is over. 
And if you have the extra actions attribute, you can do more now. But if not, it, everything's over. All right. Uh, combat is essential. Is let's let's see if we can skip to meet here a little bit. It's essential. Yeah, absolute power. Beginnings of any new combat. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll have to start here. At the beginning of any new combat scene, the characters all make initiative rolls. This determines the order they can act during the combat. The initiative order. This remains constant for the duration of the combat and under normal circumstances does not change round to round. Oh, is this one of those games where you only roll it once? It looks like. Ugh. He and I differ on that one. I, I want initiative every round. Like, I don't mind the Palladium stuff where it's like you have multiple actions per round. Yeah. That, that doesn't bother me at all. But I hate static roll initiative, and that's what it is for the rest of your life for that combat. I, combat is more chaotic than that. Um, anyway, after initiative order has been determined, combat proceeds through a series of one or more rounds. Each round of combat covers three to four seconds of time from the character's perspectives, depending on the character's actions and circumstances. It's not really relevant. It can be one to ten seconds if you need it to be. GMs can have rounds represent more time which would be dramatically appropriate. For example, a long-range space battle. A round is simply a period of time in which an ordinary character performs one significant action. Okay. Characters are normally permitted to take one action per round, though characters with extra actions attribute can act multiple times in a single round. An action is a major activity such as attacking an opponent or doing something else significant like performing a magical ritual, using a special ability, or running away with no thought of doing anything else. An action can typically also incorporate limited movement while carrying out the ac activity. Defending against someone else's attack is not an action, but rather is an automatic reaction in response to an action. And most games do that anyway. There are some differences out there, uh, like you know, Pathfinder and so forth. Um, my general rule of thumb, and this is a rule of thumb, not a hard and chiseled and stone rule. If it does or usually does require a skill check of some sort, it's an action. But, you know, just dropping a weapon, uh, you know, putting on a backpack, taking off a backpack. You don't have to roll for that stuff. I, I would say eh, it's fine. Not an action. Violence. I have um, heavy gear uh, as on a future. It won't be in 2025, but I have that on my list of possibly games to cover in 2026. But I have literally first edition and I have issues with the silhouette system. <laughs> but uh, that's for a different conversation. But I do have intentions of covering heavy gear first edition someday. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Determining initiative. Initiative regular. Okay. So let's just scroll down here. This is the important part. Total because we already covered this, didn't we? Last, yeah, last, we did. I mean, this, video? this was yeah. covered in the last video. Yeah, uh, to uh, a two d six, which is your die roll, plus mm -hmm. plus your attack combat value, which is the average of all your three stats, plus any bonuses because of of attributes or skills, like uh, uh, lightning reflexes or whatever. That is your initiative. We we covered that already, but I mm -hmm. guess you know covering it again is not bad. Yeah, especially, uh, absolutely. I, again, I don't mind redundancy as long as it's not so much that I can't get through the book. This redundancy so far, I like. Now, some of the language, maybe not, but the redundancy I like. Uh, there are three categories of actions. All right, so we have tactical, general, and attack actions. Well, let's see what they are. Uh, rather than attacking outright, a character can optionally perform a tactical action that will assist in future attacks. Aim, waiting for opening, or help avoid future damage, total defense. Okay, all right. that makes sense. Yep. General actions. This includes all other types of actions, such as using an attribute, picking up a dropped object, performing a ritual, bursting through a door, performing first aid on a friend, <gasps> running full tilt, or doing nothing except screaming for help. Because, you know, even that takes time. <laughs> the effects of general actions are normally adjudicated by the game master. General actions may include movement unless it would be incompatible with the action. For example, one can run forward while drawing a weapon, but not usually while performing first aid. Fair enough. I'm just, I want to picture that. Okay, nope, not picturing it. <laughs> Can't do it. Uh, an, an offensive attack action can combine an attack with a limited movement, such as charging toward a foe or a description of a colorful combat maneuver. Man maneuvre. Maneuvre. Uh, <laughs> for example, <laughs> I grab the flagpole and swing down from the building to kick my opponent. Yeah, this is, so as somebody who's writing his own game system, this is the hardest part of writing combat rules yes Ad adjudicating movement before in the middle of or after a combat action how do you how do you adjudicate that 
Because if you go too open, people complain that it's too open. If you put rules in there, people abuse them and do things that don't make sense. So I, I'm actually, this is one of the things that I've kind of struggled with as well. I, I, I've handled it for mine, but uh, some people I know are going to look at this and be like, no, 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 I need to know, can I split my movement? Can I do this? It's like, don't worry about it. Do something reasonable. You're playing a superhero game, first of all, so yeah. reasonable could be quite a big area. Yeah, the, the, the idea of doing something reasonable is a lot in a superhero game. It's, 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 it's a big realm. You got a lot of possibilities in there. Pick one of those. But something like this, I think, is a perfect example. I grab the flagpole, swing down from the building to kick my opponent. That shouldn't stop anybody from uh, no. doing anything. And if you really have to make a decision, like, I'm going to charge, I'm going to charge and tackle Heathen Dog. Well, he is pretty far away. Make a roll or give him a defense roll or something or, or add to his or, defense you know, roll or how, something. How much, how much real estate can you cover in a round? You know, you may not be able to make it in the three to four seconds it takes. That is true. And there is movement yeah, rate. If, if I'm a football field away and you don't have super speed, I don't know what I don't know what to tell you, man. You're not gonna make it. <laughs> You're gonna be like Monty Python, the Holy Grail. Exactly. It has to make sense. <laughs> Tactical actions. You can aim. A character who intends to make a ranged attack may deliberately take extra time to aim. If a character aims a ranged weapon at a particular target for an entire round, three to four seconds, and does not move or defend during that period, the next range attack on that opponent, the following round gains a minor edge on the attack roll. Okay. Right. Aiming for a second consecutive round improves that benefit to a major. Wait, instead, aiming a for a second round instead of a minor. Yes. Oh, <laughs> get rid of that. That word is not necessary. Technical writing. That word is not necessary. Okay, so it uh, improves the benefit to a major edge, but doing so for a longer period does not have any additional effect. Good, good, because the the act of me aiming really hard shouldn't make you less defensible. That's stupid. Right. But I mean, but to be fair, spending some time on it does make you know. make your role better. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm down. Uh, if the, if an aiming character chooses to make a defense roll before attacking, the edge benefit of the aim is lost because sure, you had to move. Yeah. Yep. All makes perfect sense. You can wait for an opening an attacker who is at melee range. So you're fighting with swords and fisty cuffs and and claws and tentacles. Sure. May use a tactical action to study the foe, waiting for an opening instead of attacking. This works much like aim. The next melee attack on that opponent, the following round, gains a minor edge on the attacker. Oh, it's like maneuver from uh, Earth Dawn. Yes. Yes. And if okay, you wait that... two rounds and you, you get a major edge, but yeah. I'm sure here you, you can take defensive action. Well, let's find out. Uh, unlike aiming with ranged weapon, though characters can still defend themselves against incoming attacks. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, you're si it, you know, again, it does make sense because you're sizing the, the person whole rope up. thing. That's what you're doing. Yeah. You know, a little bit of that. You know, you're just you're just covering up, and you're like, okay, okay, he he loves that overhand right. I'll wait for another one, and then pow. Yeah, in a in a, uh, in a uh, sword fights, you know, you're focusing more on the parrying, waiting to get that that strike, and then you find, ah, got it, repost. You know, um, now total defense. Total defense. That is turtle mode. A <laughs> character who can who takes this defensive tactical action is concentrating completely on defense instead of attacking or engaging in another activity. They still move normally, but may not take other attack or tactical actions. Regardless how regardless how many actions they have each round. Okay. Since the character is dodging and weaving, uh, pairing frantically or ducking and hiding. Let me read that again. May still move normally, but may not. Okay, so you can move, but you can't take other attack or yeah, tactical you, you, you actions. You cannot, can't aim. Yeah, you can't take a proactive action. The only thing you can do is defend, and that's it. But you receive a major edge on all defense the entire round. That's the next thing. So it's not just against the next attack. It's for everything coming at you that entire round. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good benefit, especially if you are on the if you're on the the bad end of a dozen attackers. And and when do you use this? Well, you do you do this like he said when you're on the bad end of a dozen attackers, and you've got buddies coming in. Yeah, yeah, and if you 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 are taking uh, all the hits for your team. You know, you are the distraction, or I you're mean, curling up into the you, fetal position, waiting for them to get here. <laughs> exactly. You know, it sucks to be you, but you know, hopefully you can take it. Right. That's that's what, that's how it works. No. All right. Da -da 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 -da. Is that everything on this page? Oh, nope. 
general actions all right rather than take well we we already kind of know what general actions are right um yeah. general actions such as non-combat action, actions include attribute chain state so it's, it's using your powers using your skills yeah, um, that, that isn't an attack right attribute right. synergy may arise when a character has two or more attributes we already talked about that um I just want to make sure it's the same. It's the same rule. This just goes into attributes instead of skills right, and right, stats. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, that, that's 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 what that's what skills are basically. They're they're, they're the attributes. <laughs> skills and powers are attributes. So if uh, like uh, the example we used before was a lock that was a biometric lock. Well, mm-hmm. if you have if you have the skill in lock picking and you have the skill in in biomechanics, then you can use them both and get an edge in your role. Great. Okay. General action. Got it. If um, and if you're not sure, like, whoa, you guys skipped a lot. What were you talking about? Look at the last video. It's in, it's yeah, all in the last it. video. We do, we dove into it pretty deeply in the last video. Withdraw from combat. Now, this is a rule that a lot of games do poorly. Let's mm-hmm. see what this game does. Players may also use general actions to run away or safely withdraw from melee combat, provided the opposition does not attack at a later initiative number in the same round. Okay, so if you turn and run and the person still has attack available to him, it actually makes sense that he can attack you. Right. But if, if he's he, already attacked, you can now turn and run, and all he can do is go, oh. If the opponent <laughs> presses the attack on a later initiative number and thus refuses to let the character leave the engagement, the character's attempt to withdraw fails. Again, that makes sense. And, to, and we, we've uh, in the very first sentence, it made the distinction between run away and safely withdraw. There was two things separated by an or, which means running away is different than safely withdrawing. It's probably it's probably going to say which is which just in a minute. Uh, to ensure a safe and successful withdrawal from melee combat, the character could instead hold the initiative until after the opponent has acted and then take the withdraw action. Uh, so that you could you could ready. It's like I'm, I got to wait for him to swing and then I'm bolting. Okay, here you go. Okay, that's right. fine. Yeah. But just running away, the the opponent is going to get a free attack on you that that you have minimal defenses against. But if you're just running away, then you just got to run away. And you know, and sometimes you have to. Yeah, sometimes you just got to run. I mean, that's just it. I mean, it's either it's either that or just lose badly. All right, free action. Some activities require an insignificant amount of time. Why is this in the combat section? Uh, to for, because oh, because, because, because move a short distance, jump up or forward, okay. climb an easy surface. You know, all this can be done. Like you know, a a, a four foot high fence. No, no, no I, I get, I get it. But this should have been in the action section last. It should video. have been yes, but it can be done during during an attack action as well. Mm-hmm. Jumping a four foot high fence to kick somebody can be done because jumping the fence would be a free action. Right, right. Yeah, that, that's my only quibble. I'm not mad. This is my only quibble is I think the, these action types should have been the last one. My only caveat to that is, well, this one actually dives into after you've rolled initiative and he makes a good distinction between mo- the narration and the initiative. So maybe that's why it's here. Not not really complaining. It just seems like to me like, wow, this, okay, this we're supposed to be reading combat. Uh, a character can perform each of the following example activities within reason in addition to an attack or general action moving. To, oh, wow, wow, I cannot read. In addition to attack or general actions during the round, though this list is not exhaustive. So you can move a short distance, you can jump up forward, you can climb an easy surface at one half normal speed, make defense rolls. I guess, yeah, that would count as a free. Okay. Glance around, maneuver. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Not going to read it all. Remove a ring from your finger. Gobble down take some a, food or drink. Okay. Take a book from a shelf. I don't know. That's not a lot of food. For three seconds. <laughs> uh, attributes in combat. Offensive use of non-weapon attributes. Ooh, okay. Creative characters can use a number of seemingly ineff- inoffensive attributes in very effective ways while engaged in battle. Weapon is obviously designed for offensive use against an opponent. But what about teleport? Could a character not teleport an opponent in front of a moving truck or out of a fight entirely? Wide sure. range of attributes can be used against one person or possessions, including exorcism, dynamic. Okay, we got uh, that list. Yeah, dur- move- for example, I think during combat, if if you have uh, some kind of uh, taunt or or uh, you know uh, you know skill or ability like that during combat, you can use as a general action. You can try and taunt your opponent into making a mistake. That makes sense, right? 
but it's not it's not combat but it does directly affect combat so i get it okay so how do we do that when a character wishes to use what is normally an inoffensive attribute against an unwilling opponent the character must take a general action and make a successful opposed stat roll using the relevant stat for the attribute otherwise the target resists the attributes effect entirely okay using his example i try to taunt he resists with his mind with his mind and ma yeah. maybe even mind shield i'm, I'm not I'm not sure if it only works for mind powers or if it yeah. works for all mind attacks yeah we're, we're not trying to be uh nuanced or pedantic about the yeah, actual yeah. terms yeah. of the game we're just giving examples so, yeah. exactly so you know if, if that that would determine whether it was successful or not and if i was properly taunted i would leave myself open and his next attack maybe has an edge or whatever okay obstacle right. yeah the attribute doesn't have the area or range enhancement assigned and thus requires character requires that the character touches the target. Uh, first, must make a successful touch attack. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Sometimes, like, I really struggle with his writing style. Uh, all right. Uh, so, well, actually, no, this sentence is important. This touch action integrates with the general action to activate the attribute and is not considered a distinct action by itself. Okay, so it's a free attack to touch. The yeah. touch itself only initiates the attack. It's not part of it. I get it. You'd, you'd still have to make the touch, but once that's done, okay, you're not waiting to the next round to do the thing you wanted to right, do. Exactly. Touch. Yes. Like, like for, for for example, if you have if you have a, a super blasters range of touch, you have to touch the opponent. That's not the attack. The attack is what happens after you successfully touch the opponent. Then it goes boom. Yes. Okay. If a character attempts to offensively use a non-weapon attribute on an object within the sphere of control of another person, the target character can make an opposed soul stat roll against the aggressor to resist the effect as though he was the target of the attack and not the object. So if you've got some sort of area bubble here, sure. everything in that bubble is considered protected, whether you attack him or you attack my 20-ounce cup of whatever's in here. Sure. It's definitely so not chance. So, if you want to take my caffeine away from me, I still get to roll to resist. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. Other common objects. Uh, include. Okay, we don't need to worry about that. If you want to dive into the rules more, just dive into them more. Affecting groups. Ooh. When a large group of people attempts to resist the effect of an attribute. So, you're trying to do a fireball and it goes whoosh, right? Well, the G yeah, or, or or even just just convincing a crowd to riot, right? Yeah, but we're talking superpowers here. We're going with superpowers. <laughs> hey, me mental mental control over an entire group of people through my voice. Shut up. Can be done. If you want to be a hot actress and convince a lot, of, oh no! If you want to be a Twitch thought, this is how you do. It. Oh, geez. <laughs> a large group of people attempts to resist the effects of an attribute. The GM makes one opposed roll using the average soul stat value of the targets. Okay, or, so your audience is important for for the uh, for the uh, uh, target number. If if your if your audience is uh, a bunch of people who would be generally more resistant to you saying or doing things, your target number is going to be higher. Yeah, and and we'll get into that here in just a moment because I think I want to say this again. When a large group of people attempts to resist the effects of an attribute, the GM makes one opposed roll using the average soul stat of the target or hedges the roll. This is actually a time when I think that hedging I is think good. Hedging would be appropriate, yes. When it's a large group of people, yeah, I, I think hedging would be would be a good deal for this. Yes. Important characters such as player characters or key NPCs make individual or can make individual roles for themselves to prevent the more vulnerable citizens from dragging down the important characters. Perfect rule. Yes, this that is good. I mean, yes, all that 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 offensive, you know, you know, like a, a word magic that you have works on the on the henchman, but not the lieutenant. Yeah. The lieutenant makes a separate role. The henchmen make their average role, whatever. But the but the, the lieutenant resists on his own. Yep. It makes perfect sense to me. So there we go. So either it works or doesn't on on the normies, but uh, each each Important. lieutenant, as you say, and has a. a... Individual checks. Uh, well, no, we're not. Uh, it's just that, saying you, you can roll if you want individually. Yeah. All right. Character movement. All right. Are you ready for character movement? Because I don't I'm know ready. if I am. The GM decides whether he wishes to keep detailed track of movement, ranges, and distances. What do you mean decides? 
to okay, decide there better to be more to this detailed. because yes you keep detailed track of <laughs> well maybe it's not too detailed maybe it's like oh uh, yeah okay you're 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 about oh, kind of like range bands like uh yeah. like, like close, lands? medium far that, yeah, if okay. you want to do that you can right so okay that that's that's fair that's fair you want to go over it fine uh we got a super chat in that's an interruptible one i'm not looking at so go ahead okay uh uh re leon re lion okay just a donation Bye. to recognize those who are unafraided to stand up against the insanity love the streams thank you very much Ryan Lyon, appreciate it yeah thank you very much for the 1999 that's right we're not afraid to stand up against i'm afraid of everybody <laughs> against the gets the, the tyranny of the unwashed bastards <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> those who would kick us out or i don't i don't even know what the, i'm going back to what we talked about at the beginning of the stream that's all Whatever. i'm thinking about uh but no appreciate the 1999 absolutely appreciate the support thank you uh gm's gonna measure okay so here we go in most close in combat situations gms need not worry about exact speeds and distances since the general idea of the overall situation is suspe- is sufficient sure. gms can measure ranges in an abstract fashion you're behind and a melee range you can reach oh you can reach him in three rounds if you hurry i am so for this but i've also seen it cause a ton yes. of problems there are some people who just need specifics to yes. picture anything they just need it i don't like those people either but yeah, I, they exist. this this works for this works for me yes yes oh um, you, you uh, if you have to hurry so you have to run for three rounds and then you will catch up and another way you can do this is and not using the three rounds thing let's say it's a one round thing you can always roll i'm not sure if you can make it to that spot i used to do this in the 80 and d second edition all the time uh but i don't know if you can make it to that spot roll a dex check if you make it, you made it there. If not, oh, you're just short. I want to dive over. I want to get over this hedgerow. I want to, you know, or climb over this fence. I got to get to the other side because they're shooting arrows at me. Whatever. Hmm. That's right on the, that looks like it's pretty close to the limit. Roll. If you make it, you make it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, I saw people say that you should use saving throws. But it doesn't matter. But the point is, it's like there's a random chance. So there are different ways that you can do this. I like this. But Heathen Dog's 100% right. You got some people like, no, I, I should be able to run exactly. Oh, God. I have an entire. You know what? They're also right. It depends on on how, how the game master adjudicates distances. <coughs> Excuse me. And mod- and mod- <coughs> drink, oh, <my> drink. <laughs> Here, I'll drink for Heathen Dog. Yeah, I. Uh... Okay, sorry. No, how, how the game master adjudicates distances and modifiers and and chance and all that stuff. But as long as the game master is consistent from the beginning, yep, then everything should be able to work fine, no matter what tactic you take. The reason why I like the more abstract systems, as long as they're not too crazy abstract, is because I despise. And yes, that is the word I meant to use. And I and I we talked about this on fr- on Friday quite a bit. Um, when we had the uh, the panel show, I despise two things. Number one, the fact that, oh, I'm dropping my fireball exactly right here, and since you're right there, it stops an inch from your nose. That's nonsense that, no. Fireballs go whoosh. And yeah, if, yeah uh, there, uh, for, for, for that, if you're playing Earth on, there is another spell. It's called yep. triangulate. Then if you do that, then you know exactly the distance between all things in the spell area, and you could place your fireball wherever you want you you could make it rain wherever you want out there and yep. it'll be perfect because you're literally casting a spell that gives you range finders yeah it, it, it make it makes your eyeballs range find everything <laughs> and, and so, it's yeah. lines in between all because you know, th- that, that's yeah. the intent of it but you have to cast a spell first in order exactly. to make that happen if you have that good on you if you don't have that no man you're going to be plus minus whatever yep. feet and and yeah. one of the things again using AD and Second Edition that I do is I say okay uh, you know they're right at the edge there they they didn't get away you 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 want to drop it at this spot but okay saving throw for everybody inside is the standard saving throw of full or half right if they if they get you know fire we're just talking fireball here so full damage or half damage the people sure. on the edge that I think are on the edge roll a save for half or none 
It's because yeah. maybe you didn't quite make it out of there or you didn't wait long enough. Well, that's bullshit. That's BS you know? because the squares, I hate hey, squares. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you don't see the squares, man. Your character cannot yeah. see the squares. And there, there's no distance demarcation on the ground like right. there is on the combat map. You shut your pie hole. You are very lucky I'm not using grenade rules. You could have you destroyed yourself. Yeah, right. All right? So, Stop it. So it's a, and then the other one is, and I see this in games where modifiers have big jumps. Like it isn't just one, two, three, four, but you'll be like, you know, two, five, eight, you know, that kind of stuff. They'll be, I want to be at exactly 239 feet because at 240, I get a plus five or a minus five, and I only want the minus two. And it's like, that's ridiculous. You can't. Unless you literally have range finders on and are counting the numbers down to get to that point, you cannot do that. that that's why I prefer abstract ranges. And you will get the players that do that nonsense. And I, I despise yeah. that. That's not a role playing game. That's a war game. So. Yeah. If, if uh, you have to use measuring tape, then you, sh you should be playing Mech Warrior. <laughs> and as a Battletech guy, hence the name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't cross the streams, okay? All right, let's move on. Whatever. Uh, Oh, you're buying, uh, the GM should judge how quickly that's, I don't know why that still annoys me every time I see that. Uh, maybe Canada's different, but in, in the U.S. and U.S. English periods go inside the quotes. Okay, now that I said that, the GM should judge how quickly the range shifts from relative speeds to dramatic necessity. For example, in a race between two opponents with equal speeds, well, that means we're exactly the same, right? Mm, <laughs> allow no, allow the character exactly who keeps... You can allow the character who keeps winning initiative to increase the gap gradually between him and the other runner. There you go. I, we did races in school all the time, and there were a couple of kids that I would beat sometimes and would beat me other times. There are some kids that beat all of us, and there are some kids that, that I could never walk faster. Yeah, yeah, that never. So, a good way to a good way to resolve long distance chases is for the game master to establish a certain number of combat rounds between the starting point and the goal. It then becomes a simple matter of reaching the target first. Yeah, I'm with that. Movement speed. Oh my god, more in movement speed. If the GM wishes to keep precise track of movement and distances, assume an average human adult can walk approximately. Oh my god. Yeah, okay, we don't, can... we don't, no, no. If you want to read this on your own, please yeah. do. We're we're, yep. we're not doing miles per hour. We're, we're definitely not doing kilometers per hour. Shut your hole. <laughs> difficult um, terrain again. It you you can tell what's going to happen with difficult terrain. It's going to lessen probably both your speed and the amount of ground you can cover. It's a quarter. It's a quarter to a half. You know, depending on what's up. Um, I and it's oh my god again that drives me nuts. My movement rate is four. I can climb a mountain. That no. You climbed a mountain at, it took you all day. Well, that's because my movement rate says this, because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, Common it's sense not a sidewalk, up. moron. Yeah. It's a rock face. <laughs> These are two different speed, you know, uh, uh, two, 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 different, two different speed scales here. You, you, don't, you don't have to, you know, research on Google exactly, you know, how fast Usain Bolt, by the way, I did for movement rates in my game. Uh, <laughs> you know, or... What I also did is how for you know, because some things don't line up. Usain Bolt ran, runs pretty fast, right? Sure. But if he were to do a, a march in the American Civil War, if I remember correctly, it's an average of 24 miles a day. Uh, Roman army was an average of 30 miles a day, or is it kilometers? Either way, um, there are differences. I actually looked this stuff up for movement rates in my game. Well, that doesn't, if I actually moved a quarter of my movement, I would actually be able to move 60 miles a day. No, you're moving 20, you're moving 24, 30, or yeah, whatever. You're, you know. you're, you're forgetting that this marches are a sustainable pace not your yes. maximum pace yes. no one can go full out for a whole day shut your hole unless of course you have the 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 superpower of yeah. never getting tired ever. endurance yeah yeah well no no high endurance is going to make you be able to go longer but you're probably not going to go 24 hours at full speed yeah, but, I, but, yeah. but it, it can change the dynamic yeah, is it, the it, point. it'll 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 change the end result but not by a lot because after you get tired you're going to go much slower than if you pace yourself throughout the entire day. And the reason we bring this stuff up isn't to just add weird complexity or nonsense into the game. We've run into this stuff. We yeah. see people who have done this, and a good game master just says, this is the way it is. But we're putting the warning signals out there for you, like, hey, be careful. <laughs> be careful of players who will say this because they are there and they will jump at you. 
A successful body stat roll allows a sprinting character to jump uh, in meters one quarter his top speed. A failed roll means the character falls short. All right. Hopefully you made it across that cliff. Yeah. Uh, but I saw the vehicle one in here. Is it uh, Similarly, a car racing along at 250 kilometers per hour could jump. 63 meters but a wheel to track vehicle or boat can only jump if it has a ramp or other means of vertical ascent i want to see a track vehicle jump anything yes <laughs> i i want to i want to see the 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 uh, duke brothers get into a tank and da, 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 jump da, da, that da, da, over da, da, the crate. <laughs> exactly i i want to hear what the narrator will say at the pause at the top at the apex of the jump <laughs> well, i want to hear that the jump is when he just Go down. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like it's not a jump. You can go, right there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. All right. Uh, I have a bunch I'm supposed to skip in here. Are we there yet? Nope. All right. Let's get through this attack roll. So, attack actions. We've already talked about the attack roll in the previous section. So, here it is again the attack roll. Here, I'll zoom in. There you go. Total roll equals, total roll equals dice roll plus attack combat value plus bonuses. Yes. So, and your declare, attack combat value is the average of all three of your stats. And your and your your bonuses or any skills or powers you have that add to ACV. Yep. Describe your action, and from there you'll figure out what attributes you're using, uh, or you know, obviously describe what attributes you're using in that case. And the game master will give you the, the difficulty number, yada yada. Um, it's normally an opposed roll. Target gets a defense roll representing the ability to dodge, block, or parry. Isn't the same thing. If mm -hmm. the attacker's total rolls. If the attacker's total roll equals or exceeds the target's defense roll, the attack is successful. And damage is usually applied. If not, the character is missed. So, ties go to the attacker. <clears throat> there you go. Usually that's usually that's opposite. Yes. Usually uh, ties go to the defender. In a lot of games, yes, ties to, uh, go to the defender. I think the purpose in this game is for consistency's sake, since you're the one actively rolling... You're the one that you're the uh, one who has to make the threshold. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh. All right. Uh, characters miss attacks. Over. Okay. Unopposed ranged attack rolls. Ooh. Unopposed ranged attack. What is that? An Probably unopposed ranged attack against an inanimate object. So me. Uh. Usually succeeds automatically. Inanimate mm. targets include building areas of ground, unconscious or restrained foes, or the dude who's sleeping that you're just being a jerk and trying to shoot. Now I don't like this. And the reason I don't like this is because uh, it, it doesn't say, well, what if the, what if your unopposed target is very small and you have to hit it? Well, I think uh, so we'll see unopposed range attack roll made against characters capable of defending, which chooses to uh, average not to as a uh, target number 12. I mean, in that case, again, make a, make a ruling uh, on that and say, no, uh, you can't do that. It's too small of an area. You're not. Sh you're not going to shoot from a hundred yards away. You're not going to take your bow and shoot into the keyhole. Yeah. yeah. Unless unless you make that awesome roll. Unless you make that awesome roll, right? But I think the point here is, you know, just shooting a target that's just sleep. You know, sleeping in a chair, and you're at a relatively normal range. Remember, these are superheroes. Yeah. Just roll. Uh, that's what Unopposed melee attack rolls. Unopposed melee attack roll against an adjacent inanimate target. So you're punching your door. Or against sure. characters who is capable of defending but chooses not to, usually succeeds automatically. So if for whatever reason Heathen Dog lets me Rochambeau him and I go first, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Melee versus range. Some attacks are useful at distance, while others are limited to close range hand to hand fighting. Known as a melee attack. It's up to the game master side whether. Just to track accurate ranges, distances, or simply approximate them. Dude, Again, you're in melee range. It's arm's reach, literally arm's reach, or you know, that's a little further, but yeah, a little, little further. Maybe you got a sword, you know, so it's a little further. But you don't need to keep super accurate track of that. You're in melee range, or you're not. Yeah. There you go. That's another one that I struggled with as well because I wanted to make pole arms reasonable. And you know, if you're the advantage of a pole arm is I keep you at bay. The disadvantage of a pole arm is once you're inside, <laughs> then you're boned because so, yeah, you're you're in, inside the reach, which means the the pointy end is not is not dangerous to you anymore. Right. Um, a weapon without a range enhancement is a melee attack. It is only usable against adjacent opponents with within touch distance, usually one to two meters. This is the range for swords, punches, bites, etc. It's the default range for all attacks if no range is listed. Saying it twice okay. within the two sentences, okay. Weapons with the reach enhancement are also considered melee attacks. 
but their effective distance is much further due to the length. Oh, so that'd be a really that long. Would that would be your pole. Arm. That'd be your pole arm. I want a one mile long pole arm. <laughs> they have that in the anime called Bleach. <laughs> there, 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 there was a guy that that can extend his sword like five miles or something. Wow, and you know what? While this is absolute power and not Bessem, it's still the same system, same company, same everything. You now, you too can have your mile-long sword. Good luck sheathing that thing. Uh, well, it, it extends and contracts at the speed of light, so. I was going to say, how long does it take? But you just said the speed of light, so okay. Yeah, it just happens. <laughs> the melee, it is a quantum sword. There you go. That's basically the <laughs> the melee attack and enemy attack attributes adds to the combat value if the character is performing a melee attack with the appropriate weapon or against specific opponents. So, if you are trained in uh, in knives and for whatever reason you're using um, what's like the opposite of a knife, something big, axe. clunky, what? An axe. An axe, yeah, yeah, battle axe. You're not going to get the bonus. No. So, uh. Do, 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 do. Melee defense attribute uh, adds the defense combat value if the character is defending against a melee attack with the appropriate weapon. So the same thing. If you want the bonus to parry and, and block and defend with a sword, you've got to be using a sword. Sure. Makes sense. Throwing melee weapons. Weapon items with a range of zero may optionally be thrown out to a range of one to five meters. Uh, the character loses the thrown item and it will take at least one general action to recover it. The character suffers a major obstacle on the attack roll when throwing such weapons, unless it is also balanced for throwing. The ranged attack attribute rather than the melee attack adds to the combat value. I can hear people screaming already. I don't see why. I mean, I get it. I mean, if if you have a throwing knife, you can stab people with it. You don't have to throw, but you can throw because it's made to be thrown. Yeah, no, it's the five meters part. Dude, like javelins, boomerangs, even throwing knives, throwing axes. I know people who can throw those things much, much, well, much. Yeah, further but with accuracy that's yep. combat accurate, I don't know, man. That's rough. I mean, you're not usually melee fighting with those things, so you're, you're going to be standing there. Uh, but I want to be very clear about this. I don't have a problem with the rule. The rule isn't Earth. The rule is this universe. These rules make up how things act in this universe. It's as close to Earth as possible in order for people to, you know, have some understanding. But it is not meant to be a perfect representation of real world Earth. So I literally have no problem with it. But I also know that pe some people are going to draw Darius, out physics lines. Right. Darius 28 says major, major obstacle. Yeah, you are. You're throwing something that was not meant to be thrown. You you are going to have a major major obstacle to hit with it. I I get that. I get uh, that. well, let's see. Let's see. Where, where's the specific so it's So there, weapons imp or improvised objects with range zero may option be thrown. Or the character loses thrown. I will take one. The character suffers a major obstacle when throwing such weapons, unless it's also balanced for throwing. Yeah. So, well, okay. Darius says minor maybe, but everyone flinches when you throw a chair. Minor maybe. Oh, I I get it. The problem is that in combat. If if you are if you are throwing something that is not meant to be thrown, there are two things happening here. One, you're using a weapon in a way it was not made for, and two, you made the decision because you're so damn desperate that you are doing something that something is not meant to be made to be done. So that is another detriment. It's both physical and psychological. So if that's two minors equals a major. There you go. Uh, so so remember also a lot of things are meant to be thrown. Throwing knives are meant to be thrown. Shriek and are meant to be thrown. Now, you might argue, what about a grenade? Well, that, that's debatable, because here are some things that people don't think about. If you throw a, a large round object, or not even large, if you throw a round object at me, I'm probably apt to catch it. I was pretty good at baseball. Now, I might not want to when I see that I just caught a grenade, but yeah. grenades also don't have to hit me in the face in order for it to work. That just needs to go, boom, five feet yeah. from me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So having that major... Uh, uh, or that major obstacle isn't necessarily a problem. If you throw, I've actually had this happen. If you throw a chair leg at me, it's actually pretty, I'm not saying you will every time, but it's a lot easier to dodge that than say somebody who throws a dart. Now I've never had a dart thrown at me, but I have. Every, okay. A chair, a chair leg. Uh, I've, I've dodged, you know, saw it come from the periphery. Oh crap. Because they are not the most accurate things to throw is a combination of him throwing a chair leg and me seeing it out of the periphery. Go, oh crap. 
So I, I actually don't have a problem with this. Remember, you're only talking two, two dice. You're still going to have all your other modifiers on top of that. So if you're a superhero and you're meant for throwing stuff, guess what? You're going to throw anything and you're going to smack everybody in the face. Yeah. You're still going to so, smack. Yeah. Th that really affects mundane people for, for more. And this isn't to act like I'm some sort of ninja or some crap like that. What I'm trying to say is that... Uh, you throw a ball at me, I'm probably going to catch it. Maybe that's a bad idea if it's a spiky ball <laughs> you know, or something. But you throw something like a knife at me, first of all, it's going to be probably too fast for me to dodge unless I see you literally throwing it and I'm just dodging out of the arc of your arm or anything else. And it's meant to be thrown, so you have no penalty. It, it, I think it works out. I think it makes sense. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Touch tech. Some attributes, including metamorphosis, mimic, mind control, nullify, and telepathy, require a character to touch the target during use. It's much easier to just touch a person than it is to physically strike him with sufficient force and skill to cause damage. Yeah, um, if anybody who's been in a fight, you know, a lot of times people actually touch in fights. You know? I'm going to get, you know, <laughs> I can't punch anymore. Uh, anyway, consequently, uh, any character who is merely attempting to touch an, an opponent and establish skin-to-skin -skin contact without inflicting damage, which may include a grab, slap, punch, or full-body tackle, gains a minor edge to the attack roll. The skin-to-skin -to -thing, skin thing here mm, bothers me just a touch. Because if I'm wearing a bunch of clothes, now I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt, so that's different, but if I'm wearing my, like my hoodie, it might be harder for you to get skin-to-skin -skin contact. Is that what matters? I know, like, even in D&D, &D, people would argue this crap all the time. Like, well, you touched, it, you touched his cloak, you didn't actually touch his hand. Uh, I think that should still mean that because it's magic. But, you know, I can also see people saying, nope, it says you have to touch the target. Eh. So who knows in this one? Uh, uh, da, 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 gains minor edge. Uh, touching a specific part of a target's body may also require an optional called shot. Like, I have to touch his face. I have to touch his hand. You know, with those specific associated edges and obstacles applying to the rolls instead. This maneuver assumes the character is simply attempting to make physical contact with the target. Okay, if prolonged contact is required, the target must either be willing or the character must grapple the target. That makes sense. So, yeah, throwing a javelin is different than throwing a sword. Absolutely. And that's why I'm saying, ooh, I can see people complaining about the five meters because a javelin can go a lot more than five meters, you know. But I, I want to be very clear about this. The rule does not make me angry. Just remember, you're not playing on Earth. All right. Casual touch. Hey, casual touch is bad touch. <laughs> of course, characters don't need to start a fight to openly reach out and touch someone. Casual touching happens in everyday life, from handing cash to a street vendor to shaking hands with a business partner or superhero ally. These direct skin-to-skin -skin examples, amongst countless others, present ideal opportunities to initiate touch bait attributes outside that is, combat. That is true. I mean, the, 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 the biggest advantage you can have with a touch-based power is tricking your opponent into touching you. And then it just works. So under normal circumstances, uh, an attack roll is not required. That makes sense. Skyline holds three of the target would be unwilling to accept the character's intended use of the attributes, such as a nightclub bouncer, not relishing the idea of a character attempting to dominate him. Oh, wait, well, hold on, hold on. I missed something. Touch actions is moving. Uh, this. Oh. They seem, okay, hold on. I wanted to skip part of this, but... Under normal circumstances, attack roll is not required for a casual touch action since the movement is not aggressive and the target is thus not defending against the character's touch. This guideline holds true even if the target usually would be an un would be unwilling to accept the character's intended use of the action. Okay, now I got it. Such as a nightclub bouncer not relishing the idea of a character attempting to dominate him with mind control, but not detecting anything wrong with casual bump during a crowded concert. Yeah, okay, like like I just said earlier, yeah, the 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 best the best uh, way to do this is to you know, make him touch you or have it be completely non-threatening, but attached to your power. There you go. Yep. All right. You can read the rest of that there. I'm going to scroll down to the next one. Range attacks. Range one is three meters. Range two is 10. There are your, sp there you go. There's your ranges. There now, it is. what does this mean? This means that if you have a range level at or attribute level of two, whatever that attack is, goes 10 meters. So for his uh, one mile, or oh, you said five miles, right? <laughs> For for that super sword that that can, <laughs> if you if you have a yeah, range five that's like that's six a little over six miles right there so ten kilometers that would have to have a range five on 
<laughs> I don't know if that's, I think as a game master, I'd be like, uh, no, but that's how you would do it. Yeah, you spend Your the point ma- power. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know uh, most portable missiles, artillery, and vehicle mecha cannons are in this category. So that gives you an idea. But that's how far it would go. And if you want to go further. There is a range 10, right? I mean, it goes up to like. No. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that from here to the moon? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, you'll have to look at the range category for that because I think it does go up to 10. Yeah. Knockback. We're going to skip knockback. Um, falling after knockback. You, you Just know that the rules in the game. Why aren't you covering everything? Because I think we're giving you enough. We do want yeah, to cover defense, yeah. though. You get the gist. It's fine. Defense is important. If a character is the target of an attack, he may immediately attempt to defend against it. So, Palladium fans, look at that. It's just like Palladium, right? I roll an attack, you get to roll the par- parry or dodge, or roll a punch fall impact. Uh, defenses are not dependent on initiative order, but are resolved as the attack roll is made. Sure. A defense because roll... you wouldn't make a defensive maneuver unless somebody attacked you first. Right. So... <laughs> I'm, I'm punching you and you have to wait till that character goes that character goes and that character goes to make your defense roll yeah that no. doesn't work because <laughs> I've, I've, I've been punched it's over <laughs> <laughs> a defense roll represents dodging blocking and parrying it is always an opposed roll against attack roll defending character rolls two dice and adds defense combat value to the result so it's two dice plus attack combat value versus two dice plus defense combat value and then it talks about attributes that may increase that roll for a total Roll of dice plus defense combat value plus bonuses. And if you go look at the last video, nice little page, it compares the two, tells you what to do. If the defense roll exceeds, exceeds, does not say equal to, it says exceeds. The opposing attack roll, the attack was successfully dodged. So in this case, as we mentioned before, the tie goes to the attacker. And and I and to me that just makes sense because really the attacker is the actor. Make yeah, okay. Yeah. I can get it. I can get it. Taking cover, characters who are taking cover. Now, you, you guys should know if you follow us any length of time, cover and concealment are two soapbox issues for me in role playing games. Yes. Now, now, this actually works because taking cover gives you a minor or major edge to defend. It doesn't completely block the attack. But we'll see. Is that hey, right? Hey, Daryl, the author of this game is from Kanadistan, so uh, he writes in Kanadistanian. Yes, he writes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, characters who are taking cover when attacked at range or in, the, or in some situational instances, melee combat as well, receive a minor edge for partially covered and major edge for mostly covered on the defense rolls. Maybe that I'm visualizing this wrong. That is true. Yeah, that is the opposite. That, that, that should be concealment. Cover, cover should, oh, yeah, should yeah, give yeah. you a defense against damage. Right. Concealment should give you defense against attack. You know, the issue that I'm having, it wasn't even that. I haven't got to that point yet, but you're right. Um, but it might not. In, a lot of games do this. They combine cover and concealment together. Right. And, uh, and, and if you combine it in your head, that's what this is. And yeah. it's fine. Okay. My issue is is this. And I could be that I'm not understanding the game well enough because I only played Bessem one time. And that is... A superhero with any decent amount of points isn't going to care. <laughs> like, he's like blow through the wall, you know. He's going to, yeah. Well, well, even even outside the powers itself, just the cover. Like, okay, so I rolled snake eyes instead of box cars. I needed a twelve to hit. Uh, my bonuses that I've got already come close to that or beat it. So my again. If you've got experience with the game, seriously, let me know what I'm not taking into consideration here. Because I'm just seeing like, okay, yeah, it puts me at a little bit disadvantaged, but chances are you got full cover, I'm still going to hit you. That's what I'm seeing. Maybe yeah, I'm right. putting too much emphasis on modifiers, but I mean, it goes up to 30 for a reason. I know, and- right? I mean, if, if you do the math and some someone someone is in uh, uh, major major edge concealment, they get the wait they get the major edge on their defense roll right mm-hmm. so that that will increase the number you have to get maybe it'll increase it out, outside your normal range that's possible yeah no i i can i can see it work I get for mundane characters this makes sense to me i'm concerned about the super powered characters but maybe that's partially the point. I don't know. You know, superpower characters should be really good at shooting stuff yeah, and, and and you know uh, 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 
a super superpowered characters should expect that sometimes attacks go through walls. They should expect that. Well, it says, no, no, to be clear, being pedantic just for a moment here, it does say mostly covered, not fully covered. So, you know, your hand was exposed, your head was exposed, Fine. whatever. Okay. But, and in a super, I mean, Hawkeye, right? He should be able to shoot somebody. So I guess it does make sense. Yeah. And then it goes on to say, of course, attackers cannot usually target characters who are completely concealed and cannot be seen unless the method of attack provides yep. that ability. Now, my my answer to that is well is my method of attack enough to destroy the wall he's completely hiding behind if yes then i can still hit him yeah <laughs> and you've been playing a superhero game disintegration beams are a thing it might be less damage because you had to go sure. through the wall or something but sure. yeah but you're still going to get hit well i'm sure armor's going to come up at some point in this combat chapter better right i hope uh, defending in a vehicle. If a vehicle is the target of attack, its driver or pilot usually makes the defense rolls. If the exactly. vehicle is unable to maneuver, uh, trapped in confined space, for example, the game master may decide that it can't defend at all. Remember, anybody who's been in the military has heard this term. Vehicles are bullet magnets. Yes. A driver cannot normally defend the vehicle against attacks made by the character riding in it or on it. I'm sorry. A driver cannot normally defend the vehicle against attacks made. By oh, so if you're sitting in the passenger oh, seat, if you're seat. on the vehicle. Well, hang I, on. I mean, we see it in the movies all the time. Someone grabs the top of the vehicle and the yeah. driver, it tries to shake them off. Yeah. Now, is that considered an attack or is that considered just them increasing their defense? Yeah, but here's value? the thing. Most of the time, they're either trying to shoot the driver or pull the driver out and throw him on the ground. But this I isn't... have also seen drivers shoot through the roof trying to trying to you know sure well and, and and in both cases this paragraph's true if i That's just great. if i'm on the vehicle and i just want to hurt the vehicle i'm not talking about the driver it's not gonna be hard i'm on the vehicle i'm gonna hurt it and you you're in the vehicle already right you shot through the roof you hurt the vehicle <laughs> yeah fair yeah that's because that's specifically what it talked about in the in that uh uh cannot defend the vehicle right so. you can still right. defend yourself but not the vehicle right okay. right copy that copy that Defending uh, with a shield, okay, fine. I don't uh, think primary design to deflect blows. Uh, use of side. Some larger shields have uh, potent enhancement, which provides the targeted character a minor edge or a major edge when defending using a shield. Oh, so the bigger the shield, so it's potent minus two. We'll you'll have to look up exactly what that does. But under these circumstances, shield's armor rating does not reduce the damage inflicted from a successful hit, since the success indicates the shield deflection was bypassed. This is the default assumption. The attacker will always try to bypass the shield. A defender will always try to interpose the shield to block. So you have to declare that you didn't want to do that. Yeah. If you're holding a shield, you will always use the, you'll always get the minor or major edge in defense. Okay. And you cannot use your shield to enhance your defense if he's attacking your shield. Duh. Okay. But I'm glad right. that rule is in there because you know, I'll oh, get the bonus. No, he's there literally you attacking there your you shield. Yeah. You cannot shield your shield with your shield. Yeah, exactly. If you shield your shield with your shield, then he just hits your shield. That's yeah, right. It's That's what he like, wanted to do anyway. You know, like, okay. That's like people are like, parry, uh, what's it? If you parry a sword with your arm, what is that called? It's called getting hit. Yeah. A successful attack upon your arm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, uh, a character can usually defend regardless of actions. She can choose not to defend if the target is capable of defending, but chooses not to. The target number is 12. We already read that before. No need to defend. If the target's total defense roll against an attack would still be successful, even if the target only rolled as low as two on the dice, the defender is either much better than the attacker, the attacker rolled a very low number, the defense is automatic. Okay, you know, that, that makes sense. I get it. It's funny yeah, like, that they're... For, for, for example, for, for example, if the... If, uh, if the attacker rolled a rolled two ones and it ends up being two plus two plus two so that's two four six and the defender starts off with a stat of four and a bonus of a bonus of three that's already yeah. seven he doesn't have to roll you, you you can't hit him with that roll you can't right it's an automatic defense yeah it it, it, it basically saves time by rolling one set of die yeah isn't it is it a major time sink if you keep rolling anyway no but it's just something you don't have to do. I have an entire section here. I said, do not read. And yet we're not even going to come up to that section. What page is that? 184. Oh. All right, let's move on. Now we're going to talk about damage. So damage is weapon level. Time. I'm actually going to skip. This is going to be one of the few times when I actually do the uh, example 
over the rule. Okay. Uh, but it's damage equals weapon level times damage multiplier plus attack combat value. Now, I know you don't have to do it, but in technical writing, we are taught for simplicity's sake and for quick, easier understanding, uh, put the parentheses in here. So, Citizen Prometheus successfully strikes a mid-level crime boss with his bright level 8 Roman candle attack. It's effective. It's an effective level six weapon. Okay, so we have a weapon level of six. That is a ridiculous visual, but okay. <laughs> there we go. Five, nine, six. Yeah. Uh, Prometheus has a damage multiplier of five and an attack combat value of 16 when using okay. ranged flame powers. Which this is. So if we have weapon level of six, damage multiplier of five, so that's 30. Plus uh, attack combat value of 16, we should be doing 46 points of damage, correct? Uh, his Roman candle attack inflicts 46 points of damage on the crime boss. Level 6 weapon times 5 multiplier plus 16 attack combat value is 46 damage. Again, I know the, the, that in math you should know how to do this. But for but always for simplicity, in, in technical is appropriate. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're always told to make things as as dummy proof as Clear possible. as possible. Yeah. So, clear as but possible hope, now hopefully. what what would i what would go through my head dude mm -hmm. that's a roman candle you almost blew me in half what the hell <laughs> well i've been hit with roman candles before they didn't burn my arm off it's yeah but those weren't superpower roman candles I guess not but you know what damn that's messed up size damage modifiers for characters any size rank other than medium we talked about that in previous episodes the appropriate damage modifiers also added to the attack formula so you have weapon level times damage multiplier plus attack combat value plus size damage modifier yeah, it's gonna hurt more getting hit by a giant than it's gonna be getting hit by a midget it's weird that it's in, in the plus side and not in the multiplier side hmm. well uh, you can you can add a negative number no 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 i know i know that what i'm saying is like uh it really does let's just put it this way it really doesn't add a lot unless those numbers are pretty big i would think that it would be a multiplier based on size not just a, a static number but i'm i'm obviously wrong so let's move, okay, on. move on uh weapon damage default when a weapon delivers damage without much character intervention assume the damage multiplier is five and do not add any combat value so okay, if you have yeah, a weapon yeah, okay okay this is for like uh landmines or in, in this instance caltrops uh there you sure. are not targeting the weapon at all it is a it is activated by some other method. So it's just normal weapon level times five. That's it. Yeah. And okay. then some don't count for your strength. They just do static damage. Basically, it's weapon level times damage modifier. So, wow. all right, let's uh, unarmed damage is equal to your attack combat value. Okay. Super strength damage bonus. Here we go. An unarmed character with a super strength attribute inflicts an additional damage bonus of plus 10 per level. When sure. using a normal melee weapon, normal melee or thrown weapon, instead each supernatural, each super strength level <laughs> adds plus 2 to the attacker's damage multiplier. All right, let's look at this. The big fat bold ore right here. Because you can only benefit from one or the other. So sure. your damage bonus is either equal to 10 times the super strength level. Sure. So let's say you have super strength level of three, that would give you a bon damage bonus of 30. Sure. Or damage multiplier bonus is two times the super strength level. So you, now you have all that other stuff that you that you put together, and then you times it by, by with that, I mean this stuff over here. Right, so hang on. So uh, here, here's, here's, the, here's the thing. Uh, keeping your super strength level of three, you have an effective super strength rank of three. So you can choose either, to have plus 30 total damage, or instead of having a times five multiplier, have a times six multiplier. Yeah, two times super strength value. Yeah. So it'd be two times three, that'd be six. Yep. Okay. I mean, it. I guess it all depends on what you're doing. But yeah, I, 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 would, I, I, I would make them choose in the beginning, not change it whenever they want. Yeah, I mean, I understand the math of this. I just don't understand its use necessarily in the game. I would have yeah, to see I mean, in action. What, what's wrong with picking one or the other and just going with it? Just pick one or the other. Uh, you know, if, if if I were the game master, I would choose one and use that only throughout the game. That's what I would do. Okay. But yeah, you're a mild neighbor. I would I would have to see it in action before I make a judgment on that either way. I, I see what you're saying. At the same time, I don't have a problem with this. 
necessarily. I have to see it in action though first, and I and I haven't. Uh, Non-combat damage occurs from accidents, so impact damage. If you're crashing, table yeah, crash, eight three assists. You're gonna get hurt. Yep, crashing falling. falling. Also Here you go. Sucks. No, no, the falling is fun. It's the end. <laughs> it's, it's a sudden stop at the end. Yes. Uh, so here's here's the damage tables for fall, or how much damage you take. So if you fall oh two to three God. meters. So so wait, nobody is over the age of thirty five in this game. Because if I'm falling two meters, I don't care if I'm ready for it or not. I get hurt. I'm fitty. You're fitty. We're gonna get hurt. Two, two meters is like six feet. Screw that. It's six foot six. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, it, it doesn't matter if I'm ready for that fall or not. I'm injuring myself in some way. No. Oh, you're gonna roll with that and be completely fine. Don't, no, I don't need to roll with that. I can take that shock. I no, know you, I can. No, no, yes, I can. You're, My ladder is over six dude. feet. Wait, wait, but before thirty-five, yeah, you could take that. Your knees can no longer take that. Well, they no. did this summer, so. <laughs> no, I, 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 no, I don't believe it. Okay. Liars lie. That's what okay. <laughs> To be fair, I don't like going up on that ladder or that roof anymore, but. Uh, all right. Now, if I would have fell from the roof, that would have been a different story. <laughs> uh, environmental damage. Uh, characters can suffer damage from surrounding environment. Okay, so this is going to be like toxins and gas. So acid, yeah, you know, these chemicals. Fire, whatever. Yeah, so, electricity in the ground. You're like, oh, the electricity is conducting through a puddle. Whatever. Okay, great. Fire, and pressure. Yeah, I'm in the bottom of the ocean. That's going to suck. Uh, just to give some numbers here. An average chemical exposure localized to a small area inflicts two damage each round until washed away, with maximum damage capped at 10 to 20. All depends on concentration. Things are going to be different. And if you have a power that does this, that's going to even... Normal damage multiplier yeah. nonsense. So, yeah, po powers are super concentrated, whatever it's supposed to be. You've got cold. 40 yeah, sure. You're going to take 40 damage in liquid nitrogen. That makes Ele sense. That's electricity. Just fire and we're not going to read all the damages here but it just gives you an idea uh, these are things again these numbers can vary based on concentration and the circumstances but they give you a general uh idea. understanding suffocation and vacuum i don't know why those are in two different sections but okay <laughs> well no vacuum does more damage besides i can't breathe that's fair that is yeah, true 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 armor ratings here we go there we go finally Armor and force fields attribute can protect against injury by reducing the damage sustained by the attributes armor rating. If this reduces damage to zero or lower, the attack bounced off or was absorbed by the protection. No harm comes to target. So your goal in wearing armor is to reduce that damage to zero. Makes perfect sense. Yep. The penetrating and piercing weapon enhancements reduce the effect of armor rating by 10 for each assignment. Sucks. Conversely, the non-penetrating weapon limiter increases the effective armor rating. Why would you do that? Well, I guess it's like well, hollow points. Shat weapons, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you want to you do more damage, so you increase the rank, so you'll do more damage, but against any kind of armor, it, yeah. increases the, it decreases the total damage. It makes sense. I just don't expect that I'd ever be fighting somebody without armor, <laughs> like in a superhero game, but that's me. Well, no, if, if you're a super villain, you're fighting normies at first, right? Always. You're almost always fighting normies at first. Yeah, but those should just, those shouldn't even be rules. It should be like, okay, you took, what are you doing? Robbing the bank? You kick in the bank door. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I'm exaggerating, hey, you know but what? you. Once in a while, a, a bank guard wants to be a hero. He uh, fair. Be the <laughs> okay. Right? You win. <laughs> All right. Continuing in the early example, if the crime boss is wearing medium armor with an armor rating of 25, remember we did 46 damage before, right? Yep. This value is subtracted from Prometheus's 46 damage. The Roman candle now afflicts 21 damage. So it's just the damage minus the armor rating, the rest the character takes. Still, it's man, for, that for a Roman simple. candle, that's still unreasonable. <laughs> I, would, I would be angry at the Roman candle guy. <laughs> that's just the name of the power you realize that, that i that's know kind of, i know okay. it's the power but <laughs> okay. i would still be angry at him for for misrepresenting the lethality of his attack <laughs> I, firecracker <laughs> boom nuclear explosion that's a firecracker that's like eight <laughs> sticks of dynamite you bastard <laughs> <laughs> fool you um all right health points equals current health points minus damage got it Lower no injury attacks. The damage delivered by effectively level zero weapons only considers the attacker's combat value based damage for weapons with effective level of negative one. No actual damage at all is delivered. That's that's fine. Yep. That's because you're so horrible with it. You just know. Or or it's it's just a squirt gun or whatever, and it just does water. Water doesn't damage you. Okay, it's time we tone this down a little bit and get somber and serious for just a moment here. 
Okay. Should a player character NPC's health points ever drop to zero or below, it's time to cry. He yeah. suffered a severe wound and is oh, rendered Lord. unconscious from the trauma. Oh, dear Lord. If a character is reduced to the negative value of his health points, for example, negative 40, if the character's normal health point max was 40, sure. he suffered a mortal wound and will soon die. Or possibly fall into a coma, depending on the tone of the game. Man, how hard is it to die in this damn game? <laughs> well, on. it's a superhero. It is a superhero game. I know, I know. But, you know, negative your total, that's like blown in half. <laughs> that's, you're uh, dead. <laughs> But, you know, at least with the negative 40, you know, uh, unless medical attention arrives promptly, right? The Game Master may allow a dying character to linger long enough to say the last few words, Avenge me! Or perform some other final heroic act. No, you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, you just performed the heroic yeah, act. Yeah, the heroic act was you dying heroically. That was it. That's what you did. Good job. You succeeded. <laughs> now, freaking shuffle off. Death in the game can occur rarely often or never depending on the tone or theme of the campaign often. the default rule position absolute zero is player character npc death is a real consequence of extreme actions ton of respect thank you it happens rarely but can result from deadly force or careless negligence heroic characters are responsible for keeping their powers in check that's part of the point of the game absolute yeah. power by the way Yes, yes. And not you're, laying waste to their opponents haphazardly yeah. if they wish to avoid the potential for killing in discrimination. I, I don't know how it handles it in this game, but in, in, in other games, if you're playing a hero, you actually get deficits for causing excessive damage to the environment, killing anyone, you know, even by accident. Uh, in in the in the Marvel face rip game in the 80s, for 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 every uh section of city that you damaged. You get minus the equivalent of experience points for that. You're going to love Bear's heroic game because he really leans into that. Uh, he's one of those people that believes that superhero games should be superheroes and he doesn't like the vigilante idea and so forth. And while it is in the game in terms of, yeah, you know, he's got to make sales and so forth, he leans heavily into the, no, you're supposed to be a hero and you're going to be a hero, dang it. Yeah. Heroes, heroes don't destroy tenements. See? Even by accident. I can't be a hero. <laughs> um, not all superhero stories have the possibility for combat death or the chance of accidental death, however. In these games, characters may hit a villain with their full might and be comfortable that the GM won't announce that they've unwittingly decapitated the opponent. Whatever. But th there is a style of game. For, let's be honest. Some tables, you know, especially if you're playing with children, I get it. Yeah. Um, okay, recovery. Recovering lost health points. For example, a character with a body stat of five rejuvenates five health points daily. So it's your body stat. It's your body stat day. Okay, that's normal. Yeah. Okay. What's um, so it's going to take you a couple of days to, re I mean, without extra, without you know. Intervention. Yeah. And that's fine. It should. You shouldn't just be going from fight to fight to fight to fight, wake up the next day from fight. And let's be honest, one of the things I think is missing from a lot of role-playing games right now, and, and we talked about this with Kevin and Sean last week in, in Palladium, is that you might not be going into the next fight fully charged. Exactly. You know, the in, in the, this game uses energy points. Palladium uses PPP, uh, sorry, PPE and ISP. So you may have just fought the lieutenant, and now you're in the next room fighting the boss, You've you used a lot of energy points fighting the lieutenant. You don't have everything back yet, but you still got to go. Still got got to be done. It's way it's way it is. In more cinematic and less realistic games, the default rate of recovering health points may proceed too slowly. The game master and players may jointly des uh, decide to increase health point recovery rate to hourly instead of daily. Or you could just say, "Hey, you guys are out for two days. You'll be fine after that. Let's move on." Uh, whatever you want to do. I just I like healing. Because I think it makes for a more more verisimilitude, but you know, your t your was it your mileage may vary. Yep. Recovering stun damage, health points lost as a result of normal unarmed attacks or weapon attribute with the stun enhancement return at a rate equal to the character's body stat every hour. That so that's sense. non lethal I, I, damage. Yeah, I can yeah. get that. I'm I'm done with that. That's fine. Repairing equipment, items such as vehicles and oh, I'm sorry, drain stats. Sorry, I should actually read that because you know you could be drained in this one. Stat points lost as a result of weapon attribute with the drain enhancement return a rate of one stat point every hour. Okay. Items such as weapons, vehicles, and other gadgets can become damaged in the course of adventures. Characters can repair damage to equipment by making the appropriate skill roll, usually applying either the occupation, technical, or scientific skill groups. 
If the object has health points, each successful skill roll repairs 10 health points. Each skill roll should take approximately one day of work, so six to 10 hours, depending on the extent of the repairs required. Many mechanical non-organic characters do not recover health points automatically, but must be repaired. If you're a robot. Yeah, well, you know, great. You don't feel pain. Awesome for you, but also you don't heal normally. <laughs> you also you don't feel pain and oops you're now broken <laughs> exactly you are a toaster and toasters don't regenerate unless unless you have the super nanite power which you can get <laughs> you, you can get nanite regeneration sure yeah yeah you, i'd recommend getting that but hey you know whatever okay so energy points this is how you power your stuff right it's fatigue the uh, game master may rule the character will lose energy points if he's traveling working or using other metahuman powers without taking the time to rest this goes back to what we were talking about before with the whole usain boat can you know sprint really fast but he's not going to do that for 24 hours right uh as a guideline every five to ten minutes of hard work or tiring travel jogging or swimming and anybody who swam i used to do it a lot uh can result in the loss of one energy point most situations, this is too much trouble to worry about tracking precisely, but the Game Master may wish to impose it during a situation where characters balance their exhaustion with a race against time. This could be when you're being chased across the country. This could be you've got to get to a location before somebody else. There are many reasons why this could happen. Or the Game Master is just keeping the pressure on every time. Like, okay, we got to lick our wounds, and there's the enemy again. Yeah. Crap! Yeah, you know? I mean, this, this is a way to, to uh, keep you weak to because of... Uh, of storyline excitement yep and yep. and that's a great way to say it excitement not just to be a dick to the players no 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 you're 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 creating that that emotional drama like yep. you know yeah yeah you want to beat them there but if you if you go too fast you're going to be too tired to actually defend what you need to defend so you have to choose you know how tired you want to be when you get there and still get there first so recovering is the average of mind and soul stat equals the number of energy points a uh, character recovers every hour with rest. With rest. Yep. That's important. Doesn't mean you have to be sleeping, but it does mean no, you have but, to be kind of sitting down no. and relaxing. But while you are fatiguing yourself, you also cannot recover energy right. points. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you can sit back. You can have the remote control out there checking the TV or whatever you're doing. But uh, <laughs> Great, good job. But there, uh, there is no, you know exercising while re recovering energy points doesn't doesn't work and if you want to be a really weirdo superhero you can do it every 15 minutes dramatic feats character uh, characters energy points can also represent a character's reserve of luck or karma that can be used in moments of high drama or extreme emotion to transcend the character's normal limits only player characters and significant npcs may use energy points in this way uh your risk a character's life uh, blah 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 okay so if you're doing something really cool and important uh, you can get a plus one bonus to a die roll for every 10 energy points. This is going to be up to the game master. Something I did with them in the Earth Dawn game, they could spend legend points, which didn't yes. recover nearly as easily, but to no. give bonuses to the roll because uh, they're you know giving up part of their legend in order to survive in that case. And this one, you're giving up some of your energy to put that little extra oof, oomph behind it. Mm -hmm. Player retcon, we are not even going to talk about that. I, I don't even, I don't know what it says, but already I'm out. You I say right already now. I don't like it. Okay, this is the part I'm skipping because we don't need the foundation of the tristat system. So I think we are done. Uh, do, 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 do. Details Flexing. don't change the effect. Now uh, that that's important to say because it's very much like hero and champions and stuff. Yes, you, you, the, the the power does what the power does. Whatever whatever uh, form that takes, that's just flavor. It doesn't actually affect the dice and the damage. It's flavor. This is something that I don't know why, because it's one of those things I look back on and I remember not being able to understand it. But I don't understand why I didn't understand it. It, yeah. it really, I could not grasp this. When I was playing champions with these guys, like this genericness of it, and this example here is great. For example, the level three flight attribute permits speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. Exactly how it works is not important. To me, it's like, no, <laughs> no, how it works is important. I want a fireball, not a, not a, not a water ball. I want, it's like, no, no, it doesn't matter. It's a range killing attack or, you know, again, this game yeah. does it differently, but you get the idea. It's like, a no, a bullet is not the same as a fireball. What the hell are you talking about? Like, it is, it is the same. Like, yes, it is. Same effect. It's yeah. the same effect. So, you know, uh, the, the level three fight attribute goes 100 kilometers per hour, yep. whether that's anti-gravity projection or 
or fans or jets or whatever. That's just flavor. It yep. doesn't matter to the power. It does not matter. You're still going hundred kilometers an hour. The only way it will matter is if it's an item and we'll get to that in the future, but just for the purposes of having the power, he says here could represent magic, sonics, high tech, willpower, more. It could represent wings. The player could assign spread limiter, the attribute to reflect the space that the large wingspan requires. If you want to do that, it's great. Now you have a limiter, so it costs less points, um, yeah. you know, and so forth. Like I said, right now, I perfectly get this. But back then I didn't. I really wish I could be in my mind for just a moment when you guys were telling me this stuff. And I, wa I was like, no, <laughs> like because I don't know. It's just weird that I didn't understand. But yeah, that, but that is an important thing. Uh, it works as the uh, rule says it works. The fireball. Well, then you probably have something. You probably have an enhancement or a limiter on there that says only burns shit. To, to, that's that's how you incorporate that more or uh water water puts it out i don't know the, the, yeah, the un, point... un, unless you put in a, a, a bonus or a minus the the limiter or the other thing enhancement yep. enhancement it doesn't matter it's whatever flavor you want it to take yep then it won't matter like well if i choose a jet that means it won't work in space no it will work in space unless you take the limiter that makes it only, only an atmosphere an environment yep it'll still work in space how do you explain that it has its own it has, it has its own oxidizer i don't know i don't care i don't have to care it's just my and, flavor and that it, drove me insane oh, it i'm drove like him nuts drove him absolutely nuts he could not wrap his brain around yeah. that yeah. i i couldn't uh but again, that was then, this is now, I fully understand it now. And if I could just for one moment, go back in time and have that argument with Wait him and Al, yeah. It, yeah, it, it would be fun to see myself from the outside going, I can't believe I thought that way. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we, we don't need it because this goes into what what all about the tri-stat stuff and the fluxing points and so forth. This gets more into the nuance of, of the game outside of the combat itself. Um, but they are important features of the game, fluxing points, you know, things like that. But that's for they're, they're that's higher not for level. This, stuff. Not for this li live stream, that's for sure. Yeah, it's 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 higher level stuff. We don't need the optional expanded yep. rules either. Nope. Well, we're understand. gonna be covering that next next uh, next week. So oh. uh, actually, I have a lot that I'm gonna skip, but we have some important things we're gonna cover about that next week. Uh, do, 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 and chapter wow, chapter nine is going to take one two th is going to be three videos. Wow, that's rough. so. Next week is only going to be two thirds of the chapter. Mm. So, optional expanded rules next week, two thirds of the chapter. Look forward to talking to you guys then. All right, what what do we have for comments? Um, I really didn't didn't do it. I was really involved. Oh, in this whole thing, <laughs> this whole thing. So that's great. That's great. Um, uh, I don't see anything that I really I want to as a question right. or a comment. We need to comment on. Some stuff about the dice rolls, uh, not a big deal. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I love seeing the comments in there, but I don't see anything in there that we need to address, no. right? You know, for this, um, either the Rumble or the uh, the YouTube side. So a lot of people are are doing uh, are you know doing order of operations where no, you don't need the parenthetical because order of operations you right. do this and this first. I'm like, yeah, that's true. That's not what he said. What he said was putting the parenthetical in there just makes it more obvious yes. to do that first. That's all. It, it just makes it more obvious. writing, and clear, concise, consistent, accurate. Clarity, yeah. number one. So. Right. Now, uh, do, is it completely necessary to for it to be correct? Absolutely not. But adding those two little parentheticals, for that's very little effort to make it much more clear to many more people. Yes. It, it's just something you should do. That's all. Can you throw up Daryl's question while I'm getting everything? Because that's a good question. This one? Nope. This one. Oh, that one. Uh, they develop, you get experience, and we'll t I think we talked about it a little bit. If not, we'll probably dive into it later in the book. But yes, uh, characters progress. You yes, can get you more get, powerful. You get, you get experience. It's not really like experience point, like D&D &D experience points, but you, you, you get experience and you can increase your stats and powers mm -hmm. and, and, you know, attributes and all that cool stuff. Yep. You can do all that. We have, but like like most games, that's at the end of the book. Or we already cover it, and I don't remember. I, don't, I mean, I, I, don't I know we, we talked covered. a little something about it, but yeah, uh, but we didn't actually cover the section for advancement. So these deep dives that we do, these read throughs, I mean, it, you're 
people can debate whether they're really deep dives because we're not analyzing every rule constantly. Uh, but to these read throughs that we do, we do cover a lot of things. I mean, even maybe some things that some people are like, oh, you guys didn't have to do that. We'll, we'll skip some things, um, but they are meant to be to really dive into the book and show you what's there. If we skip something, it's because it's literally not important for most game tables or like today, it's such a higher level concept that it's not just necessary not... for you to understand how the game works. And more yeah. importantly, to make the decision whether you want to buy it or not. Right, right, right. So uh, the last thing I'll say then is uh, Oxford comma. I'm a person who doesn't give a crap. I, I, don't, I don't use the Oxford comma in I normal do. writing, but in technical writing, I use it every time. Yeah, I use it so, all the time. So like my book uh, that I'm writing, I'm using it because I, I'm considering that a technical manual. But if I'm writing a message to somebody, I'll use it. If I use it, I won't. If I won't, I don't care. So I always use it. Com comma and is my friend. All right. Well, let's. Uh, where's uh, boom? Uh, if you like what we've covered here, uh, if you think we, you know, got something wrong, or if you want to explain something better than we did, go ahead and put it in the comments. But I appreciate you guys hanging out. It's a little bit longer video, but co the combat chapters are always the longest ones. That's just the way it, it is. You know, going through it. I would say that you know the the people who are like, oh wow, this game's complex. It is not. It is not complex at all once you have the character done. We, Making we the character is more complex than it is. Yeah, we did. And we did. you're not going to be using all those options every combat round. No, no. So, but I appreciate you all being here, and I look forward to talking to you next week when we cover options and whatever that other thing was. <laughs> so, see you then. <laughs>